welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe but most people know me as ZA Reptiles on here and on Instagram and today we're doing our Hermes Q&A. So I actually forgot that earlier in Hermes for one of the giveaways the requirement to enter was to ask a giveaway question and I totally forgot that that was even a thing because I've been so stressed and so busy trying to get my three new enclosures in here ready to go so that I could film a room tour that I just completely forgot about the Q&A until somebody reminded me yesterday asking when the Q&A was going to be so here it is. Um, a side note that room tour is looking like it's probably going to be a New Year's room tour as opposed to a Hermes room tour so I apologize you guys already know the story why my enclosures are so late um, but yes, yeah, so it's looking like it's going to be a New Year room tour. I just I am sick of stressing about them right now. My goal is just to finish Phoenix's background so I can get that out of my mom's kitchen, and then just enjoy Christmas. Take my time setting up these enclosures. My boyfriend's coming over to do the lighting in them today so that I can set them up. And yeah, so New Year's room tour, not hurt miss. I apologize. So let's jump right into this Q&A. So I've got my phone right here with the questions that you guys asked. So I'm gonna go right through all the comments and I'm gonna try to get to as many as possible. Um, I don't think there was a whole heck of a lot, so I should be able to get through these pretty easily. So the first question I get is from Greg and he asks, how do you afford to take care of all your reptiles? And this is a really good question. I've actually been wanting to do a couple different um, like financial related videos. I did do a budgeting video, um, I think this summer or earlier this year, talking about how to budget your money for reptile moms and or zookeepers. Because if you guys don't already know, I worked for a zoo. Um, I did start on the zoo field before the reptile field or reptile community. Um, so I had to seriously budget because I lived on a zoo salary with all my animals by myself. So I learned a lot about budgeting your money. So check out that video if you want to learn how to budget your money so that you can make the most out of it. Um, anyway, how do I afford my animals? I'm very grateful that I have a very good job. Um, like I said, I was in the zoo for I was in the zoo field, so I had to budget because I didn't pay well. Now I'm lucky that um, my job is like kind of a state job, so it does pay very well. But I still get to work with animals and in the animal field. Um, so that, um, I also live at home with my parents, as you guys can see, I'm in a bedroom in my parents' house, so I get to save money that way. Um, that doesn't allow for me to spend money though, the purpose of me living here is to save up money so I can buy a house. Um, that's why I'm not renting somewhere, because instead of putting money in towards rent, I'm living here rent free so I can save money for a house. So I'm very grateful that my parents are letting me do that. Um, so that doesn't really go towards affording my reptiles, so affording my reptiles, um, budgeting definitely I still budget um, I make sure that you know I pay what I need to and then look at what money I have left I make note of like when I need to buy more feeders when I need to buy more UVB so I can add that to the budget um, I also started my Etsy shop herpetology the whole purpose of herpetology was to have money specifically for my animals so I started that when I was still working at the zoo because I was cutting it close. I gave myself about $20 for groceries every two weeks. <laughs> um, gotta do what you gotta do. But I started herpetology so that I would have a separate income specifically for my animals. So that has been very helpful. Um, so if you can find like a little side hustle that is specifically for your animals, I highly recommend that. Um, so that's been my main thing is just having side businesses that go towards my animals. So my Etsy shop, my merch, my red bubble, um, anything I get from affiliate links. So those links in my description below, whether it's for Amazon or it's for um, like Bamboo Earth or CIV. Anytime you guys use my code or use my link, I get a little commission from it. So that goes back towards my animals as well. So I just find lots of different little ways to make money that I can put back towards my animals. Okay, moving on. Um, what, Stephanie asks, what was your favorite memory of 2020 and what reptile would you never own again? So my favorite memory of 2020, you know, there's not much because we didn't get to do much this year. 
Um, if I had to pick one, I guess I would probably say back in October, I finally went back to visit my friends in the zoo that I was at in college, and it kind of felt like I was back home a little bit, um, because I was there for like four years, or four and a half years, no, three and a half years, but like four years. Um, so I got to see all of my old friends again, um, one of my best friends lives down there, so I finally got to see her again, and I got to go to the zoo, see my old co-workers, so that was just, that was a really great, great weekend. Um, it definitely, it made me very happy. I was kind of, I don't want to say I was in a funk, but it definitely boosted my positive energy, getting to go back down there and see everybody and be back at that zoo. And then her second part, what reptile would you never own again? Um, it's a toss-up between a Peter's Banded Skink and a Tokei Gecko. Peter's Banded Skinks are very cute. Tokei Gecko is absolutely gorgeous. Um, Peter Banded Skinks are not readily captive bred. Most of them are wild caught. So because of that, I wouldn't. If they were ever really like readily captive bred and we learned a lot more about their husbandry, um, maybe I would own one again. But if you guys don't remember Momo, I had Momo for like two months maybe, a month and a half. And for the little amount I paid for Momo, I used most of my money that I had left to pay for his vet bills. So, and then he ended up dying. So, rest in peace Momo. Don't, highly recommend do not get a Peter's Bandit's kink. If you cannot find one captive bred, I don't even know if they are captive bred yet or not. This was a couple of years ago and I know they were not successfully captive bred. I think I've seen some people starting to have success. So hopefully in the near future, they will be readily captive bred and doing much better in captivity than they are. Um, Toke geckos, I love them. I think they're gorgeous. They are very intimidating. You know, I can handle an animal that, you know, is kind of like that's trying to bite me. You know, I've done it. But Toke geckos are very fast. And that part was what intimidated me. It wasn't their bite. It was how fast she was. So when I had Yeti and I was cleaning her enclosure, I would like have to move around her. I would... I was so scared that if I got too close to her, she was just gonna like, I'd blink and she'd be like gone, or I'd blink and she'd be on my hand. So like, if an animal's trying to bite me, if I can handle it and like maneuver it, you know, I can work with that. But when they're so fast that I don't know what is happening, I blink and they're gone. That is what scares me. <laughs> so, Toke Gecko, probably never again, unless it was like a captive bred, really handled one. Um, I didn't care that Yeti was a look don't touch. Um, I thought she was absolutely stunning. One of the most beautiful tokes I've ever seen. So I loved her dearly. But again, wild caught. This was like when I first started out. So I was not very well educated when it came to wild caught versus captive bred. You know, that particular expo where I got Yeti and Momo, not my best moment. One of my biggest regrets in my reptile keeping career is that expo where I just let myself go and let the credit card fly. <laughs> but yeah, so Peter's Band Skink and Toke Geckos. Shauna asks, what has been your hardest and what has been your favorite enclosure upgrade so far? And I love this question because you guys know I've done a crap ton of upgrades this year. I've done three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 upgrades this year. So this is an excellent question. So my hardest and my favorite. Okay, favorite's gonna be difficult. At first it was Crikey. Whenever I redo Crikey's enclosures or upgrade him, I really, really love them. But, I'm not good with live plants. So it looked amazing when I first set it up and all the plants were alive. Now it's looking a little rough. So, maybe not Crikey's at this moment in time. Maybe, I do really like Rumples. 
that video hasn't gone up yet. That video will go up soon. I did finally put Rumpel in his new enclosure, so you guys will get to see that. I do really like his. Um, I also really like Penelope's. Oh, Queso, though. I really do like Queso, my leopard gecko. I do love that enclosure a lot. But, okay, so here's the thing. Calypso's enclosure is not done yet, but I have a feeling it's going to be my favorite. And you guys will understand when it's done and the video is up why I say that. So at this moment in time, <clears throat> I think it's a toss-up between Rumpel, my tricolored hognose, Queso, my leopard gecko, and maybe Zero, my milk snake, because... I've got a kit from Custom Reptile Habitats in there, and I just love the way it looks. So those three are kind of tied right now, but I think Calypso's is going to take the cake because she's also got a background from Custom Reptile Habitats, and I'm doing some cool enrichment things in there. So I'm just very excited to see it all come together, and I'm so excited to show you guys that. So I think Calypso's is going to end up being my favorite upgrade from this year. But so far, I guess the question was so far, um, Rumpel zero and queso and my hardest upgrade my hardest upgrade maybe i don't know maybe chalupa or tansy just because of the backgrounds i made because they are four by two by two and i did a big styrofoam and grout background so it was a mess it took a lot of work and it was big so that might have been the hardest so far. Muppet, shh. I can't take her out right now because she's got poop on her tail, so she needs a bath. Um, yeah, so probably Tansy or Chalupa just because of their backgrounds. Um, although, Phoenix is, no, hmm, hardest. Actually, compared to, like, Cusco, shh. Craig and Cusco's were a pain because I did the styrofoam like the spray foam and then I had to cut it all, silicone it all, put dirt on it all. So actually those may have been the hardest because that was a whole process. Okay, so Ollie asks, what was the moment that made you realize you wanted to do animal education? So I think there's like two things kind of. So when I started YouTube, I did it because there wasn't a lot of iguana content and I wanted to talk about iguanas. And along the way, you know, I started getting more animals, talking about them, and I really enjoyed just making these videos talking about my animals. Um, but I don't think it was until before I worked at the zoo, I was working at my local nature center where I work now, but then I was part-time. And they just brought me on to give me a good job for my resume while I applied for different zoos. And my boss is really awesome. She's kind of like, you know, what programs do you guys want to do? I'll put them on the calendar. And so she was like, do you want to do a program with your reptiles? Like, you can bring some in, you can talk about them. And I was like, heck yeah, that sounds like so much fun. And so we did that. And we had an amazing turnout, like 300 people. So my one, like, 45-minute program had to be split into two half-hour programs to accommodate everyone that showed up. So it was a little intimidating, but um, yeah, so I did that, had some of my animals there. I think I had, I obviously had Arcadius, um, I think I brought Phoenix, Tootsie, and Penelope. And it was just, it was so much fun. I loved it. It was so cool t telling everyone about these animals, showing off my animals, um, answering like kids questions so I think that was the moment where I was like this is this is pretty pretty cool like I like this a lot um and then obviously from there I went to work as a zoo educator and it was a lot of fun so that kind of made the final decision that like I would like to have my own reptile education company or business reptile education business there we go so that's kind of the end goal um, very expensive to get going so in the meantime you know i've just got my animals working on handling making sure they are you know that we have a good bond a good connection so that 
when it comes time for me to be handling them in front of a large group of people um they'll be good to go um obviously 2020 is not the year to start it because we can't have large gatherings anyway um and i i want to wait until i at least have a house and a legit reptile room so it can kind of be like my office um so that i can feel more organized because right now i have a bed and a bunch of animals so it doesn't feel organized this isn't how i would want to start a business so eventually someday i would like to have a reptile education business because everything that i've done has just kind of solidified that for me i just i love showing off my animals and teaching people about them and i like throwing in conservation messages um to try to get people thinking about that kind of stuff so I learned I do like to be not so much just behind the scenes, but in the forefront of everything. Okay, Kyla asks, what is your most high maintenance and most low maintenance animal to take care of? So most high maintenance would probably have to be Muppet and Arcadius, I think. Probably Muppet and Arcadius. Um, so obviously my two big lizards, um, Arcadius, he originally would not go to the bathroom in his enclosure, so he was very high in maintenance because I had to take him out constantly and put him in the tub for him to be able to poop. He's much better now. Now he finally goes in his enclosure. So he's a lot more low maintenance now for me, um, than he originally was. Still high maintenance for the average reptile keeper. But compared to how he has been right now, he's much more low maintenance than he was. Um, Muppet, obviously another big lizard. She's my tegu. Um, for a while there, she only pooped outside, which was fantastic for me because I didn't have to like clean it out of her enclosure because she waited until I came home from work, brought her outside, and she pooped. Well, I live in New York. It's snowing right now, so obviously can't take her outside. Um, so for a while there, she wouldn't poop in her enclosure. I found out the issue is the same issue Arcadius had, and it's that the water dish was not deep enough. So once I gave her a deeper water dish and filled it up higher, she started going in her water dish. And actually, for a while, she was just going in her enclosure. So that was a huge mess. Um, so that's why I think she's a little higher on the high maintenance scale than Arcadius, because when she poops, it's a mess. It smears. Like I said, right now she has poop on the back of her tail. I don't know how it got there. But after this, I have to go give her a bath. So, yeah. Low maintenance, either Phoenix or Tootsie, my Kenyan sand boa. So, corn snake or Kenyan sand boa, they really don't require much for me. Super easy care. Um, Phoenix is definitely more of the low maintenance because she's a good eater. She's never missed a meal. Um, Tootsie, I, I just have to leave a mouse in and see if she eats it by the next morning. Where Phoenix, I can just wave a mouse in her face and she'll eat it no matter what. So, Phoenix is probably the most low maintenance. Um, I must apologize if I pronounce any of these names wrong, but I think it's Robo Ames 311 asks, Have you or will you consider collabing with other reptile YouTubers? Yes. So, I've only actually ever done one collab, and it was when I started YouTube. It was like my first October. Um, I did a huge pet tuber collab with a bunch of other YouTubers. We did a pumpkin carving collab, and we all carved one of our pets into a pumpkin, and I carved Arcadius. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I did it with YouTubers like Lou's Little Zoo, Jessica's Animal Friends, Shasta Storm, and a couple, or not a couple, but a lot of, the, lot of others, um, Zara Zoo, Alexis Turner. So there was a lot of us. So that was super cool. But I haven't really done one since then. But um, Medusa Official and I and Lissa's Lizards, you know, we talk all the time. We're like best friends. Um, we would obviously love to do a collab together. And I guess the specific one that is asked about is Go Herping. And um, he doesn't really seem like the type of YouTuber that does collabs or wants to collab with other people in the pet YouTube field. Um, and I'm not the type of person that will just collab with anybody, honestly. Um, there's less, less about him, more about who I feel comfortable collabing with. I only really want to do it with my friends. That's who I feel comfortable doing it with. Um, so people I don't really know, I would kind of have a hard time doing that with. 
um, because collabs are supposed to be really fun. So like when I did the pumpkin carving collab with Lou's Little Zoo and Jessica's Animal Friends and Shasta and all of them, that was really fun. That's a group of people that I've been talking to and looking up to. Really love them. You know, May and Lissa are my best friends. So love to do it with them. Trisha, I love Trisha. So um, collabs are more so something I would want to do with like my friends just for fun. Um, the reptile lover asks, what made you get reptiles? So I actually went way in depth. I'll keep this nice and short, but if you want to hear the whole story, check out Reptilian Ramble. It's an awesome podcast by Hunter and Davis. There are two other reptile YouTubers, and um, I was actually just on there. I think my episode like was the last one to come out, like literally last Wednesday or something. Um, and I did answer this question in full detail, so definitely go check it out. Um, so Reptilian Ramble, awesome podcast, and. But I have to keep it short and simple, um, I've always loved animals, always loved reptiles. They weren't like my thing, but I've always loved them. Um, and then I got Zephyr, my leopard gecko, or my family leopard gecko. Um, went to college, came across, you know, I was going to college for zookeeping, came across a girl on Instagram that had an iguana, absolutely was obsessed, did all the iguana research in the world that day, and the next day got a call from my dad asking if I wanted Arcadius because one of their family friend or one of our family friends was looking to rehome him so he called me and was like do you want this iguana and I was like oh my gosh it is fate so definitely don't ever recommend jumping headfirst into reptile keeping with an iguana um do as I say not as I do um I'm very thankful that I was in the zoo field so I had a lot of connections that I could use a lot of people I could talk to reptile keepers exotic vets etc etc um, but yeah, so I got Arcadia's and he just kind of showed me this whole world of reptile keeping and I fell in love and that was kind of the summed up version of how I got into reptiles. Okay, if my phone would turn, I could look at the rest of the comments. There it goes. Um, Sarah asks, do iguanas bite? Um, yes, yes. Some have nicer temperaments than others. Arcadius is a sweetheart. I've only been bit by him once and it wasn't aggressive. I had just come home from the zoo um, back during one of my internships. I'm sure my hands smelled like something good because I did a lot of meal prep and he bit me, scared the crap out of him, and he felt very bad. So I tell myself. That's what it seemed like. He seemed like he was like traumatized by the event. So um, I've only been bit by him once. And, but other iguanas, iguanas are not a beginner pet because they can become very aggressive and they do have a very nasty bite. Um, I highly recommend checking out Ontario Iguanas. She will every now and then repost one of her injuries from one of her iguanas um, as kind of like a PSA, letting people know like what to expect if you have an adult iguana. Okay, next question. So Sophie asks three questions. Number one, was your favorite type of snake? So if you guys know me, you know I love blue animals. I have to have all the blue reptiles, like that is my goal. I've got Arcadius, I've got Crikey, I had Yeti. Um, is that it right now? That might be it right now. I mean, Tinsel and Calypso and Samoa are iridescent, so I guess it kind of counts. They've got some blues when they're in the... Uh, when they're in the sun. Um, so a red-sided garter is my absolute favorite. So they're the ones that have the bright red and bright blue stripes down their sides or on their bodies and I am obsessed with them. I absolutely love them. That is my dream snake to own. Originally it was a tricolored hognose but now I have one. So a red-sided garter is my absolute dream snake. I would die to have a red-sided garter. Number two that Sophie asked was, have you ever considered owning any rodents as pets? No. Small mammals are not my thing. I enjoy them. I enjoy playing with them. You know, when I was at the zoo, I loved the ferrets. I would take the ferrets up to the office to hang out with me and I'd play with them. Absolutely love them. But I would not want to own any sort of rodents or small mammals. And her third question is, what is your next milestone to reach? 
So the reason she asks this is because I had a goal this year of 1500 no yes 1500 subscribers on instagram and 5000 subscribers on youtube or 1500 followers on instagram and 5000 subscribers on youtube and we did hit both of those the beginning of december so my goal is by the end of the year and we hit them by the beginning of december so i was very excited um so that's why she's asking what's your next milestone so my next milestone because my channel's been growing a lot more um, rapidly, so last, no, two summers ago, I think was when I hit 1,000, and I'm at 5,000, so I think my goal for the end of 2021, I don't know if this is like reaching for the stars, but my goal for the end of 2021 is to have 10,000 subscribers. So, you know, go big or go home. Who knows what this year is going to look like? Why not shoot for the stars? So, my goal is to have 10,000 subscribers on YouTube by the end of 2021. And Instagram... I haven't really thought about my goal for Instagram. So, stay tuned for that, I guess. Maybe, like, I don't know, I'm at 15,000? I guess maybe 25,000? We'll go for like 10,000 more followers in, in 2021 on Instagram. So I guess we'll say that. End of 2021, my goal is 25,000 followers on Instagram and 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. I do always want to add a side note. A lot of people say you, know, you, sh you shouldn't be in front of the numbers, you shouldn't care about the numbers. We'd all be lying if we said we didn't care about the numbers a little bit, quite honestly. You know, it's good to do it for fun. I do this because it's fun. But it is also fun to like see yourself grow and to set milestones and to be able to reach those milestones. Like when I set a goal for 5,000 subscribers and I hit it, that was like one of the best feelings. So of course you should be doing this stuff because you want to and it's fun. But you know, there's no shame in wanting to grow and wanting to hit like your goals. So yeah. Um, Craft a logical junior asks, "What do you think is the best lizard for a beginner? Um, definitely a crested gecko or leopard gecko, leopard gecko or corn snake. Um, sand boas you could probably get away with too. Um, I did have a little trouble with Tootsie at first with eating, so maybe see if you can adopt like an adult sand boa or get an adult sand boa. It's already a good eater. Um, milk steaks. You know, there's." A lot of easy ones as far as best beginner for a lizard or for I guess asking for a lizard he's asking for a lizard so maybe not corn snake or mouse snake um, as far as lizards go I don't really there are easier animals than others I don't really like saying like what is the best beginner one because it all depends on you know you what are you capable of how good are you at research how well do you understand things you know what kind of connections do you have so for like most people an iguana would not be the best beginner lizard for me though it was totally doable so it really just depends on you do you want something super easy in which case leopard gecko or crested gecko you know how good are you at research because some of my animals maybe it's just because I started out in the zoo field and I've worked with much more complicated animals but um I don't really find any of my animals challenging really like none of them are super hard if you do the proper research and you talk to experienced keepers you know none of them are really super difficult they're all doable so it just depends on you and what you're capable of but if you're looking for something super simple to ease your way in, probably a crested gecko or a leopard gecko. You know, the average two that you hear. Um, Amanda asks, what is the best thing about owning an iguana? Definitely the bond and the connection you can make with them. Arcadius is my baby. If I could keep only one animal for the rest of my life, it would be an iguana. Um, I love Arcadius to, get, to death. So um, I think the bond that you can have with them is really cool. I'm going to try to pick up the speed a little bit because it's going to be a long video. Um, okay, Spike asks, have you always have you always wanted to work with animals 
slash reptile education and if not what made you decide to do it so kind of like the earlier question um what made you decide to work with animals i've always wanted to work with animals um since i was really little i grew up going to the zoo all the time up in south carolina so we went to the riverbank zoo all the time great zoo absolutely amazing loved it to death so i've known since i was little that i wanted to be a zookeeper it never changed my mind that's what i wanted to do that's what i went to school for um I talked earlier about why I decided to go with reptile education, so I kind of already answered that question, but yes, I've always wanted to work with animals. Um, so there is no if not what made you decide to do it, because I've always wanted to do it. <laughs> Sarah asks, what is your technique for keeping plants alive in your enclosures? I don't have one. <laughs> My plants die rapidly. <laughs> the only plants that do semi-okay are the ones planted in the ground because when I mist, when I spray, when the sprayers go off, if I water them, they're getting um, water. <laughs> um, anything I plant in the walls dies. I can't keep it alive. So for like Cusco and Crikey, I have plants on the wall and I actually have to pull them out to water them because they start to die. So I actually have two pothos sitting in my bathroom sink right now because they were dried out. <laughs> So I don't have a good method. Can't help you there. I apologize. If I could commit, um, I think like at least once a week, I try to go around and water the substrates. I just dump water and let the plants soak it up at least once a week. Um, and then for the, my tropical species, I have misters set up. So that takes care of some of the watering. But yeah, I don't really have a method. I, ha I don't have anything that really works yet. Um, so yeah, not very helpful there. And that was the last one. So thank you guys for submitting your questions for those of you that did. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss more Hurt Miss content. Christmas is just in a couple days. So I don't know how much more Hurt Miss content there is, but I do have three new upgrades coming your way and the room tour you guys have all been waiting for for a whole year. So. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you for the next video. Bye.